Okay, so I'm gonna make a video here um, just to give you some little tips and tricks for the Cursive Chimp badge packet. Um, I'm not gonna do the whole thing because it would take me a long time because you have to do this packet very slowly. Even me, who's pretty good at cursive, I need to do it pretty slowly in order to do it accurately. All right, so page one, we'll jump right into the letter C here. And you can see these dotted lines uh, for the letters on the left-hand side uh, gives you the outline of the shape. And so it's a good idea before you begin writing your own to just kind of go over and copy a few times and get the feel of the shape of this letter. So for a C, you go over the top of the C and come back around. That's why I do the C first before the A and the others because I want you to get the feel for going over the top of a letter and then coming back around. So now I'm gonna do one on my own. I'm gonna start, go up over the top of the letter and come back around and finish. So this little tail is the tail that would connect it from a letter that came before it, and this little tail is the tail that would connect to the next letter when we actually start writing words. Um, and the other thing you wanna do here is you want to really follow these lines, these four guidelines here, um, because they will make your letters look very accurate. If you look at the C and then you just start going, oh, I think it goes like that, then all of a sudden the, the, the shape of your line is, is really gonna change because you're just making up your own, your own uh, the size of every letter. And you're not, your letters are not gonna come out the same because you're gonna do one there and then you're gonna be like this and this and you're gonna be all over the place. The lines are meant to help you. If I didn't think the lines would help you tremendously, I would have left them off this packet. And just like when we teach little kindergartners, uh, to print, we give them lines to follow so that they can get this, the, the uh, letters the right size. Okay, so I'm going to start here, go over the top, just touching that middle line, come back around, just touching that bottom line, and then finish. I'll do a couple more C's. Over the top, back around, finish. Over the top, come back around, and finish. That's a letter C. Okay, now A. A becomes the, one of the, the biggest mistake you'll make in learning curses, cursive is if you don't create an A like you create a C. What you'll do wrong is you'll go around the A and then you'll finish it like that. And so you look at that and you look at that and you go, uh, they're kind of close, but that's not what you do. You also don't try to do something like this for, to get this little point here. You don't go over and then like straight down and around and then down and finish. You, you're, you don't go all the way around an A to create it. You're going to do the same thing you did with the C, which is to go over the top and come back. So you're going to go over the top of the A and then come back. And it looks like I'm actually creating a C. But what I'm going to do is go up and touch and then finish right here and get an A. Over the top. Come back around and finish. Over the top, come back around, touch, and come down to finish. The O is gonna be different, this is an A. Over the top, come back around, and then finish. Like that, that's an A. D is similar, but when you go over the top and come back around, just like you're making a C, but this time you go up, 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 and then come down, and you got yourself a D over the top, come back around. You could stop there and make an A, but we're gonna go up, 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 up to the top line and then come all the way straight down and finish a little and we end up with a D. G, same thing, over the top, come back around, touch, and then down and then make this little loop at the bottom. Over the top, come back around, touch, down and then loop in this direction, just a skinny little loop. Be careful when you do your loops here because on the next page when we do loop letters, they can get very, very fat very quickly. G. Q, similar to G, we go up and around, but when we get to here, instead of going this way to make a G, we're gonna go backwards and touch right here to make a Q. Over the top, come back around, and then down, and touch, and make a Q. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm following these lines very carefully. And I'm also slanting my letters, like you can see that D. I'm slanting it a little bit, 
Because that's typically what cursive looks like. It's slanted to the right, like italics. And it looks, that's just the original way it looked kind of fancy. Uh, some people do their cursive more straight up and down or even leaning to the left. Uh, but classically, cursive is supposed to lean to the right. You can do that too by tilting your paper a little bit while you're writing. Okay, now the O. I don't like actually this O the way it's written. I'll show you the way my O looks. It's basically the same way, but when you get to this spot right here, like you're making an A or a Q or a G or a D, um, what you're going to do is you're just going to make a little tail that kind of floats in the air right there. You don't want a tail like the A that comes down because then it'll become an A. It's sort of like the difference between a printed A, which has that, and an O, which doesn't. It finishes up in the air. So we want to finish our O up in the air and then put a little tail on it to connect it to what might be the next letter. Over the top, come back around, touch, and then finish like that. Over the top, come back around, touch, and finish with a little tail on the top. Okay, let's make a word. Since we've learned the C, the A, and the D, we can make the word CAD. So let's just connect these together. We already know how to make a C over the top and come back around. And now, instead of picking my pencil up, my pen up, before I make the A, I'm just going to go right into what would be the A. Over the top, come back around, and then finish the A, keep my pen down, and now go into the D. Over the top, come back around, and then go up, 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 and come down to finish the D. And there's a cursive word. Cod, C, over the top of the O. But this time, I stay up here before I go into the D. A little tricky. And that gives me cod, because the tail is up here, and the A tail is down here. Dog, over the top of the D. Come back around and up, up, up to make that D. And here comes the tail goes into the O, the O finishes up in the air like this, we go over the top to make the G come down, and a little loop at the end to make the word dog. One more on this page, good. Um, to get the badge, you have to do the letter C, A, D, G, Q, and O uh, 10 times each, 10 times each. And then the words at the bottom, you have to do three times each. It's a heck of a badge. Um, and you'll have a skill that a lot of people don't have anymore, which is being able to write in cursive. Although you probably won't use it that often, you'll at least have learned something historic, because cursive is going away. Good. I don't mean it's good that cursive is going away, but it's not bad. We Cursive was around when businesses would write everything by hand and wanted to make it look very neat. And so they came up with a system of writing that, that could be done very neatly and quickly. Um, but since we had typewriters and now word processors and then computers, um, most people, they don't want your handwritten stuff anymore when they, have, when they want to read something you've written. They want you to type it because it's easier to read. Okay, let's look a little bit at the next page. I'll kind of go a little quicker through this because I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks for actually how you're going to work on this. These are the looped letters. Um, e is a little loop. You, this is going to be a little loop-de-loop. -loop. I actually make my E a little bit skinnier than the E example they give there, but I don't want to make it too skinny because if I do, it'll end up looking like the beginning of an I. So I don't want it to be too skinny. And I don't want it to be too fat or it's going to look something more like an A if I accidentally write it that way. I want it to just be this little kind of loop-de-loop. -loop. I want to go. And I don't go like this up. I don't make an E going up. I make the E going out in this direction. When I start writing letters, I go this direction and then around to make the E. Same thing with the L. I'm going to make a, just a taller loop. Up, 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 up on the diagonal to start like that. And then when you turn around at the top, you kind of keep straight going down and then finish like that. The biggest mistake people make making an L is they go like this and then they come around like that, like a giant loop-de-loop. -loop. And that makes it way too fat, that loop. We want to keep it real narrow, like this, and then turn around and come back, straight up, and then just a little turn around at the top and almost coming straight back. Up, 
little turn around at the top and then coming back like that. That's an L. Okay, now an H, you do the same thing as an L, but when you get to the bottom right here, you just bounce up and make this bump like that. Same thing for the L, but now bounce up and make that little bump. For a B, you loop around the same way you make an L, but in this case, you're gonna go in and almost touch the line again and make a little tail like you finished the O, just like the O was before. Loop around, come in and almost touch and finish. A K is a loop that comes down and it's gonna be like an H, but instead, this time we're gonna, instead of a bump, we're just gonna go inside here and then finish the tail. Up and around like we're making an H, but to make the K, we go in and then we finish like that. One more. Up, this is a little complicated. Like you're making the H and then come in and then finish. Okay, and now the king of all difficult letters in cursive. For all the years that I've been teaching cursive, F is the most difficult letter that people have trouble with because it seems to have um, a lot of loops. And if you just start looping it, like if you're just like, oh, a loop and then a loop and then a finish, it doesn't, it doesn't end up looking like an L if you get too curvy with it. The F is actually not as curvy as it looks. You have to, the F, my F, actually has a very long straight line through it like that. Almost completely straight the entire way. It looks like this. You go up like you're making the L, and then when you turn around, you're just gonna go straight down, 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 down. And then a little loop at the bottom like like a cursive Q, and then finish. That's an F. Straight out this way, a little turn around, and then come straight down this way, and then a little touch and a little finish. That's an F. This will be the toughest letter of all the lowercase letters from all the years I've been teaching. If you can see it and you can do it, that's great. It doesn't exactly look like a printed F. It's the other reason it's kind of confusing to people. Um, it looks like a mix between like an L and a Q, but it's the letter F. Now when we do these loopy letter words like bell, we're gonna loop, make the letter, finish the B up here, then go right into the little E, and then a big loop for an L, and a big loop for an L, and then we got the, letter, the word bell. The thing that's important about following these lines is if you don't follow the lines, when, especially when you do the E, L, and L, you get a B, nice B here, but then if you go like that and that and that, it kind of like looks like you wrote the word B, a whole bunch of E's. So you really have to follow those lines carefully. The E goes under, stays under the middle line, and the L goes all the way up to the top, all the way up, both L's. And letters that are the same should be exactly the same height touching that line. Fell, you got that difficult F all the way down, come back around, and now just like the end of um, bell, you make the little E and the tall L and another tall L, and there we go, there's fell. Elf, a little loop for the E, a big loop for the L, and then another loop for the F, and remember when you make an F, you turn around and come all the way down, but go, stay straight, and then a little turn around at the end, and a little tail. And then we have elk, E, L, and now that K, where you bounce up, and then come in and finish. So that's it, that's the first two pages. I'm not gonna go on to do the, the other ones, um, you can probably figure those out if you're feeling pretty confident about the first two pages and, and following those lines and follow, making those letters nice and tight, then you should be okay. The cursive badge is one of the most difficult badges because it takes a lot of work. Um, and you have to erase when they don't look right or else you're just going to hand it in to me and I'm going to say start all over again. So work carefully. It has been done many times. With many students, I've had get the cursive champ badge all the way to the end where the last page you have to actually write a letter to your family using your cursive where you have to make all of the 
letters and all the words and spell everything correctly. Um, try to get a little bit of help from at home from somebody who knows how to do cursive and you know surely watch this video over and over again if you need to. Um, it's a pretty rare badge. If you're into rare badges, this is a rare one. And I wish you good luck.